From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Tarzan and the man from another world. Tarzan's mission had brought him deep into the Congo near the great rubber plantations at Lamfondi. He traveled rapidly through the jungle night, moving easily through the upper level. But suddenly he stopped and his eyes opened wide as he looked up at the Congo heavens. A moment ago, all had been inky blackness, but now a huge ball of fire streaked across the sky, leaving in its wake a shower of red and green and yellow. For a moment, all was deathly still and terrifying. And then as the firmament became black again, the jungle was filled with the screams of frightened animals, and from far off came the sounds of native drums. Tarzan moved quickly again. A few minutes later, he entered a native village that was strange to him. Sign in sky is message from demons. Now you know God's angry with you. Aye, aye. His big sign. Mean God's not spare next one who go against word of white water. Why are you attempting to frighten the people of your tribe, witch doctor? Huh? Who are you? I am Tarzan. And I'm known to many tribes as Lord of the Jungle. So you are Tarzan. Did you see sign of demons? I saw the strange ball of fire in the heavens. But I doubt that it was a sign of the demons. Just why are you so convinced of that fact? White Wana tell us God's angry because of one who break rules. You refer to Mobokia, whom I found wandering far from here? Nidio, I talked about Mobokia. You find him? I found him, and I was shocked to see the welts across his back and the lash marks upon his legs. I came here to find out about them. Mobokia, bad man. He talked to stranger. He spoke to a stranger. That was the crime for which he was half killed? Nidio, White Wana tell us not talk to stranger. Already I talk too much to you. Leave now, Tarzan. The white one you talk about, is it the Mr. Van Kruger Mobokia said he worked for? I not talk to you more. Leave. You will talk to me, and I shall not leave until you do. Now, is Van Kruger the white one you speak of? Nidio, all of tribe belong to him. You belong to him? Nidio. I thought slavery was a thing of the past. Where is this Hema? Other side of forest of rubber trees. But you not go there. He not like strangers. You'll like me far less when I get finished with him. Thank you for pointing out the direction of his home. Look, look, another ball of fire. Sire in heaven's his message from demons. The hysteria of the natives mounted as the sky fell with a shower of brilliant colors. But Tarzan had no time to speculate on their fears or on the strange phenomenon that illuminated the heavens. He left their village and started across the rubber plantation toward the jungle home of Jakob von Krug. Below him, the terrified animals milled in hopeless confusion in a vain attempt to flee from the terror that painted the Congo blackness in garish colors. Suddenly, Tarzan saw a young girl running through the maelstrom of half-crazed animals. He grasped the swinging vine and propelled himself into a great downward arc. And as his body reached the lowest point of the arc, he grasped the girl firmly about the waist and then continued his flight to the top of another tree. I'm I'm sorry I frightened you. You? You? Oh, there wasn't time to sound a warning. Any one of those animals might have leaped upon you at any moment. Who? What? Oh! I am sorry. My name is Tarzan, and I was on my way to Van Kruger's house. I saw you down there, and I acted without stopping to think of how frightened you might be of me. But I am slightly less dangerous than the other animals. Well, I, I guess the animals won't be so bad now. The fireworks seem to be letting up a little. Well, you still can't go wandering off into the jungle. Where, where did you come from? Where are you going? Which question would you like me to answer first? Well, I suppose it's obvious that you've come from Van Kruger's. This is the only house within many miles. Well, so far you're 100% wrong. I don't even know Van Kruger. I, I've just come from the mission school on the other side of the plantation. I was heading for the native village near here. Why? Well, I was going to try to persuade some of the natives to escort me to Luanda so that I could get a boat. Well, those natives aren't to be trusted. Those fireworks, as you call them, have made them almost as hysterical as the animals. Young girl would stand little chance. I of... happen to be 18, and I'm very well able to take care of myself. But I could never get down from here alone. <laughs> All right, I'll help you down. Just put your right arm over my shoulder, and I'll hold this wrist. And... Oh, what's that? It's 
called a slave bracelet. It's nothing. Just a trinket. You wouldn't be interested. Well, I am interested. With undying love from G.P. to J. Van K. You've got it all wrong. You couldn't possibly read it right in this light. Oh, my eyesight is more acute than the average. J. Van K. The, the Van K. couldn't possibly stand for Van Kruger, could it? Yes, it does. All right. Is it Miss or Mrs. Van Kruger? Oh, I'm not a runaway wife, if that's what you're thinking. He happens to be my father. Not that I'm very proud of it. You don't get on well with him? That's putting it mildly. Oh, Tarzan, please don't make me go back. Please. We'll return in just a moment to our story of Tarzan. There were many miles of impenetrable jungle between the rubber plantations of Lamfondi and the government observatory at Kilama. And the people who worked and studied within the small institution were far different from the inhabitants of the jungle. But they had one thing in common, an all-consuming interest in the strange fireballs that had streaked across the jungle heavens. Dr. Forbes, it's the greatest opportunity we've ever had. If we can just find out where those meteors landed, there's no telling what we can uncover. How do we know they landed, Jack? Maybe they burned themselves out. Well, that's possible, of course. But suppose they didn't. Suppose we can get to them while they're still fresh. We'll transport a few of them back here for study and we'll... Uh, uh, Just a moment, Jack. I hate to dampen your young enthusiasm, but there have been many meteor showers in the past. Perhaps this one will prove to be no more... Doctor, you know there hasn't been anything like this for years. Why, this one makes the Beelage Shower of 1914 look like classroom stuff. Perhaps if we get some reports of their actually landing someplace... No, it'll be too late then. If I start right now, I can get there almost before they've cooled off. But, Jack, we have so very little money at our disposal. No, I'm afraid that outfitting a large safari is quite beyond us. Well, the lack of money isn't going to cheat me out of my one big chance. I know about where those particles landed, if they did land. And I'm going there, alone if I have to. But it would mean a journey right through the heart of the Congo. Wild animals, dangerous savages, plantation owners who resent strangers. You'd be risking your life, Jack. Well... I guess it's mine to risk, Dr. Forbes. And while the young scientist was making his declaration of independence, Tarzan was escorting a very resentful young lady back toward the jungle home of Jakob von Kruger. The sky was dark again, and the animals had ceased their frightened screams, but a feeling of dark foreboding hung over the mysterious Congo. But I can't just turn you loose in the jungle. He's kept me like a prisoner, Tarzan. If you take me back, I'll never get away again. Everything I've heard about Jakob von Kruger is bad. I refuse to promise that I'll help a daughter run away from her father, but if what you tell me is true, I'll do everything within my power to help you. You you haven't told me your name. It's Johanna. Father calls me Yopi. It's a ridiculous Dutch nickname. I like to be called Joan. That's what they call me in America. In America? I went to school there for a year. And then, just when I got to like it, Father made me go to England. And by the time I'd grown to love England, he made me come home. His whole objective in life is to make me miserable. Is, is that your house just ahead? Yes. I'm very anxious to meet this unnatural father. You may not even live to meet him. He has native guards surrounding the house, and they shoot every stranger on sight. Mm, very hospitable. Perhaps you'd better climb that tree that extends over the roof and <laughs> drop in on him unexpectedly. It's too late. They spotted us. That's Dad on the veranda. Wait, wait. You fool, some fire. That's Yopi coming with a straight. Well, at least he doesn't want to kill his own daughter in cold blood. Oh, Yopi, my little girl. Where have you been? I've been worried sick for you. Mm, a fat lot you'd care if something happened to me. Oh, Yopi, to say such a thing. I didn't know you were gone until a minute ago. The excitement of the comets. We were just about to go hunting for you. This gentleman was kind enough to save you the trouble. This is my father, the well-known Jakob van Kruger. Father, meet Tarzan. It is a great pleasure to meet you, Tarzan. Any man who has brought my daughter back from the dangers of the jungle is a friend. My house and everything I own are yours for as long as you will remain with us. I came a great distance to inspect your methods here, Mr. van Kruger. I shall accept your kind hospitality. Well, 
Mr. Tarzan, you have enjoyed looking over my plantation? Yes, it's been very interesting. I had no idea it was so large. It would require another three, four days if you were to inspect the entire plantation. And by this time next year, that large clearing to the south will also be planted. Thirty years of my life I have given to this place. And your workers? Many of them have given thirty years of their lives? Yeah, that is so. They have been loyal friends. Most of them belong to one tribe. They say they are Van Kruger's people, that they belong to me. You mean uh, that's their own idea? (laughs) They find a certain security in the belief that they are my property. And as my property, they will be fed and clothed and protected. And punished? Sometimes whips and hot irons? Tarzan, you have known me for several days now. I believe you will take my word that I personally have no hand in the drastic punishments the natives sometimes mete out to their members. It is not important whether you actually administer the punishment yourself. A little over a week ago, I came upon a native who'd been beaten within an inch of his life. He came from your plantation, and I learned that he was punished because you were angry with him. It seems he dared to talk to a stranger, a a very serious crime, apparently. Yeah, a loose tongue is a serious crime. You see, Tarzan... Rubber is an essential of peace and also an essential of war. There are many powers who would stop at nothing to acquire a plantation like this one. And we also have secret methods of curing rubber that some nations would find valuable. Strangers are dangerous. I was very angry at Mabukia. I saw the signs of your anger upon his back. Ah, the others of his tribe are too hard on those who disobey me. Tarzan... You know the mind of the natives. I tell them something is wrong, they make a capital crime of it. I tell them to stop all strangers from entering. They are inclined to shoot first and ask questions later. I cannot seem to stem their fierce loyalty to me, which is translated into acts of violence. I see. I am not the kind of man to apologize for my people or to defend my actions. But you have saved my daughter. A daughter you keep a virtual prisoner. I keep her here for her own good. I sent her to America to school two years ago. She was 16. She'd been there only a short time when she wrote me she'd fallen in love. A friend made inquiries about the man. His name is Gregory Payne, a man of close to 40, who lives extravagantly but has no visible means of income. He's a mystery man whose manners are are too perfect whose past is too obscure. So you had Joan sent to England? Yeah. But this Gregory followed her there. So I had her brought home. She's too young to know her own mind, and I love her far too much to have her throw her life away on a a fortune hunter. Or worse. Mr. Van Kruger, you are either an honest man against whom I have felt much unwarranted anger, or (laughs) you're a superb actor, and I wish I knew which. Mm Hmm? Sometimes fate takes a hand in proving what... Oh, look, Tarzan, outside! The, the fireballs streaking across the heavens again. During 30 years in the Congo, I have seen many strange things in the sky, but never anything like this. I wonder what it can mean. Did you see them? The fireballs? We were just talking about them. Meteorites again. Well, yes, again. One of them landed in the south clearing. What? Only it looks like some sort of a strange rocket ship. And a weird-looking creature crawled out of it, and he's coming toward the house. I'd better call the native guards. It won't do any good. The guards fired point blank at him, only the bullets had absolutely no effect. No effect? And all of the plantation workers are lying prostrate on the ground. They think the demons are really after them this time. Joan, did you see this creature yourself? Only from the veranda. He looks like a little illustration out of one of those science fiction magazines. Like a man from another world. You two wait here. I'll go to meet him. In just a moment, we'll return to our story of Tarzan and the man from another world. And now back to our story of Tarzan and the man from another world. As Tarzan crossed the wide expanse of the south clearing, he could see in the distance the strange-looking spaceship Joan had described. And on the ground, hundreds of native workers lay in silent terror as through their ranks a weirdly dressed being stalked majestically. His angular suit was of highly polished metal, 
He wore many fantastic bits of mechanism strapped to his metal uniform, and his head was encased in a large globe-shaped helmet that revealed only two piercing eyes. Tarzan was filled with apprehension and curiosity, but his curiosity was uppermost, and he continued on until he stood squarely in the path of the outlandish creature. How do you do? Uh, Jumbo. Bonjour. Como esta usted? Uh, uh, the gates? You may converse with me in any of the Earth's languages. On the planet Uranus, we understand them all. Then you do come from another world. I come from the planet Uranus, a world nine times the size of the Earth and thousands of years more advanced in its knowledge. In what way? In every way. I am told, for example, that the peoples of Earth are still engaged in continual warfare. Yes, it's true. We seem resolved to kill one another in endless wars. I have come to put a halt to this threat against the universe or to liquidate the Earth completely. Our observation ships chose this as the site for my first visit to Earth. Your observation ships? Then those must be the fireballs we've been seeing in the heavens. Exactly. Your name? Tarzan. And yours? It will not be necessary for you to address me. I shall ask anything I wish to know about this part of the Earth, and then I shall visit other places. Upon the report I make will hinge the future of your world. Now, take me to the building at the edge of the field. I desire to meet other Earth people. Are you sure you wouldn't like to take off that heavy helmet? I am not yet used to the Earth's atmosphere. Tarzan, you will stand in front of me. I do not like people to stand where I cannot see them easily. Of course, I'll stand over here where you can see all three of us at the same time. Mr. Van Kruger, you will tell me more about this rubber. You know nothing of rubber on your planet? Our planet is almost 2,000 million miles from here, and our vegetation is far different from that of the Earth. I will be happy to give you Biola seed. We are having much good fortune with that variety of rubber plant. I am very much interested in this product of yours. Incredible as it seems, we of Uranus may yet learn something from you, Earthlings. In the morning, Van Kruger, you will escort me about your plantation. You will show me everything. Uh, Wait until you see my new coagulation vats, my presses, my improved smokehouses and drying sheds. You will find our methods here are very advanced. During the war, we made remarkable progress. You manufactured rubber for war? Well, naturally. I doubled my output during the war years. It is men like you, Van Kruger. Men who make the materials of war who are driving the earth into oblivion. If we permit the earth to endure, you will be among those who are first eradicated. Oh, come, Witch Doctor. What are you doing here at the plantation? Come to see man who not feel bullets. He's gone back into his spaceship for the night. He refused to sleep in the White Buana's house. Tarzan goes to see Great Devil Bird? Yes, I'm on my way to inspect his rocket ship, if I can. But these on ground. Uh, look like bits of cardboard. I don't know where they came from. It's strange. I'm not nearly as strange as the man from another world. Wish me luck, Witch Doctor, and... Say a spell that will make him a sound sleeper. Tarzan could observe an open hatch at the top of the weird contraption, but it was impossible to see in. It was possible, however, to see out of the windows. And as Tarzan started to climb up the fuselage, the man within it pointed a powerful-looking gun at the open hatch. As Tarzan drew close to the opening, he curled his finger around the trigger. Tarzan started to enter. And then from far off came the roar of an animal and a man's frantic cry for help. Tarzan leaped to the ground and sped toward the jungle. Moments later, he was looking down at a man pinioned beneath a huge rock, the helpless victim of a hungry panther who was about to spring. Tarzan leaped to the ground and his knife flashed in the air. You, you didn't get here a minute too soon. I thought I was... Save your breath until I get this rock off of you. This must weigh a ton. Not quite, but it proved a lot more than I could carry. I don't wonder. There. Take it easy. It's valuable. Uh, That rock? Valuable? Yes. It's a meteor fragment, and I came a long way to find it. 
Have you noticed those fireballs in the sky lately? Of course. Well, this is part of one of them. Then the, the fireballs were not observation ships from another planet? Observation ships from another planet? <laughs> I didn't think the comic books had reached the interior of the Congo. Oh, there's nothing comic about this. Are you sure this is part of what we saw in the sky? Yes, I'm positive. You see, I work in the government observatory at Coloma. Just, just what are the possibilities of a spaceship reaching here from Uranus? Seriously? Uranus is one of the most distant planets from the Earth. But is it possible that a, a rocket ship could travel from Uranus here? Uh, they'd be awful fools to head for Africa. Uranus isn't even in the southern hemisphere at this time of year. Can you walk? I, I think so. I just had wind knocked out of me. Well, then leave the rock here and come with me. I don't believe anyone will steal it, and we'll come back for it later. may turn out to be Exhibit A. The rest of the pieces of this jigsaw puzzle are beginning to fit together. Bed hadn't been slept in, Tarzan. Well, Van Kruger doesn't seem to sleep much. He may still be here in his den. We often used to talk late. You know. Look, is that Van Kruger crumpled over his desk? Yes. Dead. A bullet right through his head. It looks as though he was writing a will. There's a sort of rough draft here. Do you think it was suicide? A man can't fire a bullet through the back of his own head. And if he completed a will, where is it? Maybe his daughter has it. Oh, her room's just across the hall. Come on. Joan? Joan? Open the door. So something terrible has happened. Joan! What? She's gone. I think I know where. I, I may need help, Jack. Listen. Sounds like a plane getting ready to take off. We may be too late to save her, but we can try. The young scientist was left far behind as Tarzan streaked across the plantation to the south clearing and scrambled up the fuselage of the strange airship. But already the plane was about to take off. The motors were purring evenly, and as Tarzan lunged forward, the hatch began to close. Even Tarzan's powerful fingers could never open it. All that remained was one wild guess, one desperate chance. Greg! Greg! Open up! Uh, who is it? Who's calling me by name? I am Greg. What? What? <laughs> Joan. Joan, are you all right? I, I guess so. Do you any idea of how you turned the motors off this thing? Well, the first thing he did was to, to push that switch up before he started the motors. Well, then maybe we can turn them off by pulling it down. Let's see. Oh, it was horrible, Tarzan. After you disappeared, he came back to the house. Dad was writing a will. He was convinced that the man from another world was going to have him liquidated because he'd contributed to the war effort. And your dad wanted to make sure you'd inherit everything, right? Yes. And then as soon as Greg had the will in his hand, he killed Dad and carried me here. The natives were too frightened of him to do anything. When did you find out who he was? Just a minute ago, when he took off the, the costume. That's why he made love to me in America, Tarzan. That's why he followed me to England, to get control of Dad's plantation. He planned to kill Dad all along. Well, his days of scheming are over now. This is one valuable plantation his country will never own. Maybe I'd better tie him up before he comes to. What happened? A uh, very good plan went bad, Jack. Our friend here must have been hanging around here several weeks ago. He managed to bribe one worker into substituting blanks for the cartridges and the guns of the native guards. The uh, cardboard from the blanks are in the ground back there. But that's as far as he got. Until the meteor shower began. Then he put a little window dressing on this plane, got a fancy costume with a built-in microphone. He uh, figured quite correctly that he could frighten the natives and delude the rest of us. A and he almost succeeded. He planned to learn as much as he could about the plantation from Van Kruger. But my curiosity made him abandon his original plan. Poor Dad. And I treated him so terribly just because he talked against Greg. Joan, your father worked to build something here. Now, it's up to you to see that it doesn't fall apart. Greg, although he didn't mean what he said, spoke many truths about war. Well, rubber and steel and lumber can be materials of peace, too. And they will be if we can keep them out of the hands of men who speak too loudly of peace while they dream of war. In 
just a moment, a preview of our next exciting story of Tarzan. A beautiful young woman with a title and a fortune. A lustful Arab who rules a jungle stronghold. A vicious cockney guide to whom everything has a price. And Tarzan, lord of the jungle. These are the central characters in a story of dangers and fears. Of a kidnapping that threatens to set off international warfare. And of lives at stake in the quicksands of Guadalajara. Included in our cast were Jack Moyles, Gladys Holland, Marvin Miller, and Olin Soule. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, The Quicksands of Wadahara, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle.